Hey everyone, it's Bobby from Decoding here and this is my Django REST Framework course. If you're looking to learn DRF, this is the course for you. There's eight modules, this is module one. I'm gonna be here throughout the journey, helping you along, walking you through code, and we'll be learning all about DRF. So let's not waste any time, let's jump straight into it. Okay, let's kickstart this course. So if you're here, you probably know what Django REST Framework is. However, I need to assume that some of you don't. So Django REST Framework is a toolkit that allows you to build web APIs. Okay, so you can build a standalone API where your clients make get, put, post, delete requests to you. Your API takes that information, it validates it, and it spits back a response. Your client can do whatever they choose with that information, okay? That's one use case. Another one would be you build a backend API. Same thing, it's a standalone API essentially. However, you have a front end single page application or SPA written in React or Vue that handles the front end stuff and it communicates to the back end, gets information and renders that to your web page. Okay, so the two use cases. DRF is very powerful and very popular. I find it in most Django projects that I work on these days. So if you're here, this really is another string to your bow. I promise you that, okay? So welcome. Um, all of the pages that we see in a browser in the next few moments are found, or the links to them are found in the description of this video. So whilst you're there, please drop me a like, add a comment, subscribe and click the bell because that helps me grow the channel and helps me create content for you. Great, so this page that we see now is Django REST Framework.org. This is their main page, it has all of their documentation, has a lot of examples, and it walks you through everything that you could possibly need to know about DRF, okay? Great reference point, great bedtime reading. But we'll be looking at a lot of this in the course, so don't worry about that. Another thing that you wanna consider is, or another one of the pages I've got open here is Docker and Docker Compose. I use Docker and Docker Compose daily. It's fantastic. Get it installed if you want to follow along with me entirely. You don't need it, it's not essential, it's just something you want to consider doing. I will be using it in the course, but you have the option to do it without Docker as well. If you choose the non-Docker route, then you will need to consider installing curl or HTTPy. I would use HTTPy because the response you get when making a call to the API that we're building is humanized. It's much easier on the eye and easier to understand, okay? So either install Docker or install HTTPy on your local machine, okay? But we'll go through that in a few seconds. So I've got an itchy nose. Okay, the last tab that we're looking at is GitHub. This is the repository, this is where the code lives. You don't need a GitHub account. I would advise that you have one, but you don't need one. If you don't have one, if you want the code, click in code, download a zip file, extract it on your local machine, happy days. Bob's your uncle, you're good to go. But if you've got GitHub, then I've got commands here to um, pull down and clone down the, the code on your local machine, and you're all good. Okay, so this is the GitHub repository. It's called DRF underscore course. It has many branches. So the course is made up of eight modules. We've got eight module branches, and we've got a branch called complete. That's the complete course, okay? So if you want to scoot forward, get it cloned down, and just tinker, I wouldn't advise doing that, but you do have the option, okay? Uh, if you want to do a deeper learn, Go through each module with me, I'll walk you through, hold your hand and go along with you, okay? We'll be looking at module one today, but before we do that, let's have a look at what we got. This is the main branch, don't worry about any of this. You've got a back end directory, steps directory, daily instructions, and all of this other stuff here, don't worry, we'll go through this. Then you've got a readme file. This is where we actually start, okay? So we've got a bit of an intro here. Welcome to the course. If you're looking to add a string to your bow, great. If you're looking to build an API and DRF, great. Okay, you're in the right place. Prerequisites, you will need Python 3.10. Okay, so I use matching case statements in this course. Didn't get released in the 3.10. So if you've got 3.9 or 3.7, 3.8, 3. whatever, you're gonna need to have 3.10 installed on your local machine. Okay, if you use the Docker route, you don't need that because it's all built into the containers. Okay, next considerations, I've already talked about this. Okay, Docker. HTTP and curl, okay, these are the links. Choose whichever route you wanna take, pause the video, get it installed, come back, all right? Let's get started. So, I use VS Code, let's put that out there as my text editor. 
It's fantastic if you code in Python, Django, with the extensions that come straight out of the box and actually extensions you uh, install in the VS Code, it acts like an IDE. It's really, really good and powerful when you're coding in Python. So I would advise VS Code, but you can use Sublime or Atom or any other text editor or IDE of choice. But you will need to have an instance of your text editor opened up in a directory on your local machine called DRF underscore course. Don't call it Sally's course. Don't call it Bobby's course or anything else. Call it DRF underscore course. OK, I've already got one. I've got my text editor open up in there and we're about to clone down the code. So you do have GitHub and you have SSH set up or CLI, or if you want to use HTTPS, you have all of the different options here. I have SSH set up, so I'm just going to take this code. Where is it? Got to be careful not to click the, the little icon at the top here, because if you do, that will copy the whole piece of code there and you don't want that. Okay, all you need is the line of clone code that you choose. I use SSH, okay? Before I open up VS Code and to avoid clicking around the different tabs, this is rendered differently to what I was expecting. Each video or each module comes with a video and that video is stored in a playlist on my YouTube channel. So there's a link there on the screen. If you want to look at any of the videos, you can go in there and follow along. Okay, that's it. No more GitHub. I've got everything copied on my clipboard. Let's open up VS Code. This is what it looks like. I've got a whole bunch of extensions. So it's really powerful. Terminal, I'll open up a new terminal. You can see I've got DRF here. No, DRF underscore course. If I open up a new terminal, you can see I'm in C drive users, Bobby development DRF course. Okay. So if I use the command that I've just copied, can you see that? Yeah, you can. Let's make it a bit bigger. Is that better? Probably not. Yeah, there we go. That will now clone down the repository for module one into DRF course. So if I press enter, it'll ask me for a passphrase because I have a passphrase. It's just a little bit of extra security. Now we have it, it's all cloned down. We've got a backend directory, we've got a steps directory and a few other files here. So the steps directory is what we wanna be following along with today and in every module. Module one, lo and behold, is for module one. What I like about VS Code so if you click this little bit here, it will give you a, a um, preview of what that markdown looks like in a browser. Okay, so you can see it looks really, really good and easy to read. Okay, so we'll go through that. Um, actually, let's go through that right now. So every file starts with welcome and this follows on from the previous module. And it also gives you an idea of what your root directory should look like. And I know there's a mistake in here and I will rectify it, but it takes time. The mistake is it should have a static directory in there, but it doesn't. And it's not the end of the world, don't worry about that. So at the start of the modules, the markdown language, you'll have a what your directory should look like. And at the end, you've got a what your directories should look like now. So that avoids you saving files in the wrong directories. Uh, it's just a pain in the bum when you're trying to fire up a project and it doesn't work. So just make sure that your directories look very similar to what I've got at the bottom of these files and you're good to go. You've got backend um, directory. You can see we haven't got static in there, but it does have Docker. As a requirements.txt file that just had the requirements for Django. Um, if you're looking at DRF, you probably know Django, right? So it's just got in there, you can see we've got a whole bunch of stuff we need to install um, to get this up and running. But I've already, that's kind of avoided yeah, slowing things down. Okay, so let's go through this. So if in doubt, you can run this command if you've already got the Git uh, file in your directory and you can just pull the from origin module one. Okay, that, like I said, I won't click that again, sorry. Um, that will just make sure that you've got the same directory configuration as where we are. Steps and commands. You should now have a directory called DRF cores in your di development directory. This is known as your root directory. Okay, in this module, we'll be starting our project. Uh, to do this, we need to create a virtual environment. So look, if we're using the Docker root, you don't necessarily need all of this because it's all built in, but some of you won't. So I'm trying to kind of guide you both routes at the same time. So you know, if you're just following along from Docker, you don't necessarily need to follow along all of this. The virtual environment is only if you're going down the local route. Okay, so you use this command Python dash M V E N V, and then we call the virtual environment 
VENV. Virtual environment allows us to install dependencies in a little bubble in our directory specifically for this project. Otherwise, we'll be installing dependencies across our full machine, which is not good. Okay, so by having this virtual environment, if we have our terminal, I'll just install a VN ENV file here. You can see inside there we've got include, lib, and scripts, and inside lib we've got site packages. They're all the packages that come straight out of the box. You can see what pip, setup tools, and so on and so forth. You get that with Python uh, 3.10. Okay, so these are the instructions. We need to activate it. I'm on Windows, so I use this command. If you're not on Windows, you can use the other one, okay? How do I know it's working? I've got V, E, and V in brackets there. Now, if I chose, if this V, E, and V part here was called Bobby, that would say Bobby in there, yeah, okay? So all that is just naming the virtual environment. Okay, um, oh, there you go. So V, E, and V, path to your project era, of course, that's what it should look like. I now know I'm good to go. So two, packages and requirements, our project will rely on a whole bunch of third-party packages. They're in here, okay? We've got Django, we're using 4.1.3 using Django Filter, Django REST Framework, um, and a few other bits and pieces. Python.env, that's important, you won't normally have that. That just allows us to use a .env file in the root directory, rather than having numerous. That will be explained. It's not necessarily DRF stuff, so I haven't really focused much time on it. So yours looks like this. That's clear. No, CLR, CLS. Oh, there we go, CLS. Okay, so we now want, want to use pip install to install the requirements. You can see requirements is in the backend directory, hence the reason why we've got backend slash requirements. And this will go ahead and it'll install everything that we need into the virtual environment. So when it's gone ahead and done that, I'll show you what it now looks like. Actually, it's probably starting to look a bit different now. Yeah, there you go. So as that's installing, it's installing a whole bunch of packages in lib site packages. You see, we've got Django. So now we've got access to Django in our project, which is really, really important. Django REST framework, we've got .env, we've got inflection. So now it's gone ahead and it's installed everything. You've got a little warning here saying that pip is, uh, we need to upgrade it. You can just copy that. Can you see that? What you need to do is copy everything within the um, speech marks there, dump it in your command, Press enter and that will go ahead and that it just upgrade pip. You don't have to do that, it's not essential. Okay, so now what we can do is we can go Django admin start project DRF course backend. Okay, what that will do, because we've got access to Django and Django admin, that will now give us that will give us uh, access to a command called Django admin and a command called start project, which will create a project in backend. So in here, it will create a project called DRF course. Okay, that's what that command is doing. Okay, so now if we look in backend course, we've got DRF and a manage.py file, which is important. In DRF, we'll have a settings file, a URLs, a WSGI file, and an ASCII file, okay? So that's straight out of the box, okay? Inside settings, we've got a whole bunch of gumph in there. Don't worry about that just yet. Um, we now got a Django installed. Happy days. Secrets and ENVs. Okay, so remember I said we've got .env, we've got that installed. Well, we can now copy what we have in the template here into a file called .env. And when we have that, python-.env then gives us access to those variables within our environment. So with our um, environment variables, okay? So that's all we're doing there with that command. Copy, I hope I got these right. There we go. So we've now copied, we've now got this file, .env, okay? So if you ever wanted to add more environment variables or API secrets or tokens or Google app passwords, you would add them in here. And when you add them in here, you then gain access to them in the Python project, okay? Sorry, one second. Sorry, I had to sneeze. There we go. So, okay, back to the preview. Um, where are we? That's it. That's it. We've finished this module, where are we? We are 14 minutes in. So this module was all about an intro and just getting started, okay? So you can see I did say it earlier on that at the bottom of this 
uh, module and each module, it gives you an idea of what your um, configuration should look like. So now back end now has the Docker, which it always did. It's now got DRF cores, which it does, okay, with everything else that in it. So that's kind of a constructor file. You will need an under or dunder init file in most of the Django project. Um, it says here we've got a static directory. We don't. Look, I'm going to add one. Um, that's when we handle static files. It's very Django. Um, not very much, not so much Django REST framework. And I don't, I think I was using this when I first put the course together. And at the end, I decided I didn't need to. Got steps. I've got a VNV file, an ENV file there. Happy days. You can see that we're bang on. That's it. That's the end of this module. So thank you very much for watching. In the next module, we'll be looking at, let's have a look. We'll be looking at building some apps. Okay, so we'll be building our first app in our project called Core, and we'll be constructing our first endpoints. So before I stop, drop me a like, add a comment, share the video, subscribe and click a bell. It helps me build these courses. So thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next module. Thank you. Bye-bye.